There we go. What's up, everybody? This is J Dub, the Bad Boy Nerd, and welcome to the first episode of the Nerd Bird Report. I'm your host, J Dub. This is the co host, Supreme Ferd. What's up, man? What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for uh, tuning in to our first show. Uh, pretty excited about this. Uh, let's get it started, man. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to start doing every week. We're going to do an FOC Top 10 Countdown along with a current market report. So basically what it is, if you're not familiar with FOCs, FOC stand for Final Order Cutoff. So about three weeks to maybe a month out, before comic books hit your stands, before they hit the local shops, there's something called the final order cutoff. This is your chance to hunt down and look for the certain key books or certain books that you want, or maybe even a certain cover. Now, if you're like me, you don't want to miss the hot book or you don't want to miss a book that maybe got under ordered or maybe it's sold out immediately as soon as the store opened. So the way to get around that is to start putting in your orders for FOC, which is what we're going to do here every week starting tonight. We're going to do a FOC countdown. Now, the 10 books that we're going to talk about, they're not necessarily 10 books that I'm saying, oh, you got to take your money and go buy these 10 books. But these are 10 books where it's like, hey, maybe it's a cool cover you might want. Maybe it's a key issue. You might want to buy a certain amount of copies. Or maybe it's a book that's like an indie book that's slightly under ordered. And sometimes every store doesn't pick up all the copies. Sometimes it's a hot book that goes different covers like cover A, the main cover, cover B, C, D. Hey, maybe cover E is the hot one and your store didn't order enough. And that happens, right? That, that happens sometimes. So. What we're going to do is we're going to go through this uh, initial FOC top 10 list. We're going to do it like a countdown. I'm going to start with number 10. I'm going to ask my boy Ferd what he feels about it because Ferd follows me. We follow each other on Instagram. That's how we first initially met up. And uh, as a matter of fact, let's do that real quick, Ferd. Let's have everybody right, uh, give us a follow on our Instagram. You can see it right there at the bad boy nerd. You can follow Mr. Uh, Market Report himself at Fur Bird the Nerd. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and do a, um, I'll just show you my Instagram page real quick. You can give us both a follow right there. That's me right there. And uh, yeah, if you follow one of us, you'll, you'll find both of us. Uh, we do this. We both have plenty of content. All right. This guy posts several times a day i mean this 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 dude is like he's he's like a savant with this joint <laughs> he's like one of my favorites man this guy posts several thank times you, a day you. he gives you all the updates on the hottest books the the values all the trends uh i post maybe once or twice a day but i do a weekly foc every, every week and can check out my countdown list so anything you want to add before we get started uh, no, thank you so much for the intro, my friend. Um, I do definitely enjoy your reports every Wednesday. I don't feel myself as an expert. Um, I, I'd say I'm medium as far as FOC. So I always I always pick up the bad boys FOCs. It's 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 an anticipated post, if you will. But yeah, like like the bad boy was saying, um, yeah, come through, come see me. Uh, I'll do I'll, I'll kind of share my screen real quick. Um, let's yeah, see share here. your screen. And um, hey, hey, that, that goes right back to you, man. You're like, I told you, you're one of the uh the few people that I really follow. Like, yo, what's this guy posting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a you know there you go. It's just it's just a fun little thing. I like to try and I like to try and save people money and uh just kind of show what the actual uh you know, whatever your your books are going for and all that good stuff. But yeah, it's it's a it's a real fun thing for me to do and and do all that stuff, but um Without further ado, my friend, let's let's get this let's get this rolling, man. Here, here you go. I'm gonna share this back to you. That's cool, man. All right, so let's get it cracking. Um, so yeah, this week the FOC now final order cutoff weeks officially they run until like the following Monday. Right, I think it's like Sunday for most majors, 
And then I think it's like Monday for DC. But what I like to do is I like to do them for that Saturday. Why do I like to do it for Saturday? Because if you need to put your orders in, you don't want to wait until the last minute and they sell out. So like I said, anybody who follows me, they know when do I post for tell them when I post these. I like every Wednesday, I want to say, right? Every Wednesday, baby. Yeah. That's right. Every so Wednesday quick, on New Comic Day. Comic Book Day. So quick question for you, because I always sure. feel like I miss out on final order cutoff. So if you're posting something on Wednesday, when, how, when is the last day, basically the final order cutoff, that I need to put my order in for the books that you post that Wednesday? I get this question all the time, and this is when I tell people. So the two questions I get all the time. Number one question is, Who do you buy from? That's the number one question. Where do you buy your books from? And I'll tell you like I tell everybody else, multiple sources. Don't, don't, don't depend on one person because shenanigans happen. (laughs) So multiple sources I use. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sponsored by anybody. So I'll just say I use multiple local shops and I use multiple online shops. Now the key is usually if you order uh, from online shops, they'll give you 25% discount if you order from them before the final order cutoff. That's very, very, very important to understand, boys and girls. I'll say it again 25% off if you order before the final cutoff date. All right. So that's a key thing. You can save a lot of money. Now, the other thing is you was asking when to put in the orders. Yeah. Uh, I tell people I actually put my orders in before that Friday. So okay. I put out the FOC list Wednesday. I place all my orders by Friday to give them enough time to go through all their emails, go through all their orders mm-hmm. and make sure I get all my stuff in because I got two tragic stories where I missed out on some key books and I, whoo boy, whoo, I was upset. Lord Jesus. I'm, I'm getting upset. Just talking about it. <laughs> I, I <clears throat> that'll never happen again. I'm not going to miss out on another major book again. So basically what I did is I did what I needed for me. I needed an FOC top 10 list. So I, I made one and just like, like you, you do your market report mm-hmm. so you can keep up with the market for the book prices. And I use your market report all the time. So anyway, mm-hmm. Let's get started. Uh, let's start with this week's uh, top 10. There are some cool indies coming out. There was a lot of great books that came out. There was some really good variants. And there was one particularly chocolatey, delicious swimsuit issue that came out. And it made the top 10. So we're going to do a countdown style. So we're going to go with starting out with number 10 first. And All for right. me, uh, number 10 is going to be fantastic for number 46. Uh, reason why is because the solicitation is saying that uh, Re Richard's sister is going to be introduced. Now, personally, I just never knew a he had a sister or b she wasn't already uh, a canon character. So, I, unless I'm missing something, uh, this is like the introduction of Re Richard's uh long lost sister that he didn't know he had or whatever. Okay. Anybody out there, if you know more about it, you tell me. But I feel like this is one of those uh, soft key type of books okay. that, you know, it might blow up later. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that one cracked the top 10 at number 10. But we're going to move on to number nine real quick. Number nine on the uh, top 10 FOC countdown is. Dun, 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 dun. Do I have it? I don't even see it up here. Let me let me pull up number nine real quick. Number nine is not even like a shocking book. Because it's uh there it is. Yeah, number nine is I'm not just, even shocking. It's, I'm getting excited. Uh, what is of, it? Oh, I know. I'm, I'm getting that anticipation. It's one of those books, like it's weird because it comes with um different covers, but it's also one of those books that it might it might have a chance of selling out and you're not oh, ready. Oh, well, that's for filthy. It. Yeah, the Mandalorian, exactly. Oh, and here's my God. the thing. The interesting thing about this, it's like okay. Star Wars canon on the screen, mm-hmm. but all the characters that they're going to introduce through the book that are already on the show, this right. is going to be considered their uh, first comic book appearances if they haven't appeared already. So I'm actually looking forward to the uh, the breakout episode when they have to break out the prisoner. 
I don't know if you've seen the Mandalorian show yet. If you, uh, you know it. what? You know what's funny is the Mandalorian came out like what three years ago or, or maybe two years ago? Oh, three. Yeah, three years, ago. Two years ago. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's dumb. Like, what are they trying to do? It's just a money grab. And then, you know, I kind of I I watched it, and I the first season was okay for me, but right. the second season, man, I wanted all the books. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Um, and uh, I definitely will get this book for sure. Um, I did not know this was. I, I actually I do remember talks of this coming out, but I'm glad that you brought this you know back to my attention because obviously I forgot about it. Um, so yeah, this is a this is a great cover. Um, Grogu is like a phenomenal character as far Dude, as he's a, phen- like, he, he's a he's a worldwide phenomenon. Yeah, as far as getting kids back in the game, you know, or not game, but like the Star Wars kids. kind of world. Dude, no, getting, getting me in the game. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> the biggest kid out there. <laughs> Man, every kid wants a Grogu, you know, for Christmas. I, my niece has three of them. So, um, yeah, I, I know this is this is definitely a, a – Hey, a, I, I a guess I'm book. kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess I guess I'm every kid. <laughs> hey, man, we're all, we're all kids at heart, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. I'm just yeah. a gigantic kid. But all right, let's move on. Let's go to uh, FOC Countdown number 10. Coming in at number 10, we have Amazing Spider-Man number seven. Now, this is, of course, the new relaunch. Uh-huh. And, yeah, you know, sometimes you're, like, not so bullish on new costumes or whatever. Right. But my thing is, you never know what's going to stick. Mm-hmm. And in this one, it does introduce like this new Oscorp suit and Spider-Man gets his own uh, Green Goblin type of glider with the Spidey glider. Okay. So what I'm showing right here is the uh, one in 10 ratio, the design ratio variant, which shows the design of his new suit along with the uh, his own very own little spider glider. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like it. I like it. Yeah. yeah. These so that's just, yeah that's one of them. And, and, and again, this is one of those things, if you pre-order, depending on where right. you get it from your source, you can save money on that ratio price. All right, yep. so moving on next, we have, let's see, at number seven. Now, this one is my first uh, independent pick. And okay. I really I really like this book because I like to read stuff that's not in the mainstream yeah. sometimes. And if it's a really good story, I don't really care about how much buzz it's getting. Mm-hmm. But I read the solicitations on this one. I believe it's pronounced Ellie's. Uh, this little girl, Ellie's. But it's like Ellie's because basically she has like different personalities living inside of her. Mm-hmm. And these personalities, uh, they tend to surface, uh, I believe, at at certain wrong times of her life. They kind of take over. And uh, I first read the solicitation in Previews Magazine, the Previews Guide. Okay. I was like, oh, wow, this sounds very interesting. So, yeah, this mm-hmm. is the FOC week for the American debut. I believe this book came out overseas a year or two ago. So, okay. Ablaze, Ablaze Comics yeah. uh, picked this book up. And uh, this is going to be the American debuts of this book. So, that's a cool cover, man. Um, I do like that. Um, I do like the eyes on, on the on the char- the main character, I'm assuming, on the front. Um, Ablaze has some pretty interesting... Um, Stories, you know, obviously being independent, uh, an independent publisher, you know, it's, it, you know, the nice, also nice thing about FOC is if you, if you get, if you, if you order a, a book like this, not a lot of stores will order a blaze or they don't have a blaze publishing. So it's a good way to exactly. hit up your LCS, you know, and say, Hey, I'm looking for this L's cover from a blaze. And they're like, Oh, I, we don't, you know, we don't carry a, a blaze or, you know, for whatever reason, it may, you know, induce them to look at a blaze if they get more kind of inquiries about it. So um, again, FOC, bad boy, it, it, your, your content so important because it educates people and it, it helps them kind of not so much invest in, or, you know, um, try and make money, you know, you know, with, with comics, but to also, you know, find a way to get their LCS is kind of like, you know, awake on, on, on certain, awake on certain on these books, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It'll definitely stuff, get right? these books on the shelf. Uh, I can tell you a quick story when sure. I did, I know you remember this when I did the FOC about a month ago for uh disturbed dark Messiah. Yeah. yeah. One of my top picks was the, uh, the top McFarlane cover. 
Sure. And that, that, I don't even think that book had like a 15,000 print run, maybe sure. even 10,000. But right. yeah, I think my copy was the only copy that my shop ran because I did an FOC order. See? So I walked in, go. he had like two copies. Yep. And yeah, of course, that book was the value like spiked immediately because yeah. yeah. it was such a it was a short printed book. And uh, the Todd McFarlane cover was a one in 10 and I think a one in 20 or a one in 30. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like only a few thousand copies out there at all. So, yeah, you're right. Sometimes yeah. these independent books. That's why I like adding independent books to my list, because uh, smaller shops don't even carry them unless you put the order in. So let's move along. Right. To number, I think we're at number six. Let me see, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Yes, here we go. Number six. Hey, look, I am a cover fiend. Yeah. Uh, I, I know this is a decent series right now, but I just absolutely love this cover right here. Uh, DC versus Vampires number eight. Mm -hmm. That's just a beautiful cover, man. I, I, really I love is. that cover. It's uh, eye popping. It's a uh, Nathan Zerdy cover B variant. Very cool. Very cool cover. And again, it's one of those ones where if you're reading the story, it's possible your your shop, your shop might even they might not even order a cover B. They might just order cover A's like one of my shops. I will not name <laughs> one of my shops here locally. They they be sleeping on cover B's and C's, except unless I order it, then I get like the one or two cover B's that are even. Available. But this is uh, DC versus Vampires number eight. This Very is cover cool. B, the Nate and Zerdy variant. It's a beautiful cover. Let's move on. Getting into the top uh, five. Now, this one, for those of you who are familiar with uh, Radiant Black, awesome mm -hmm. series. Yep. Uh, Rogue Sun, the massive verse continues to expand with number one, the Dead Lucky. Dead Lucky is the latest uh, addition to the massive verse. Fur, do you know anything? Are you reading any of the massive verse books at all? You know what? Um, I was reading this for a little bit. The first issue, oddly enough, didn't really stick with me. Um, I felt like so the Radiant Black was uh, obviously I read the first issue. Um, Radiant Black, it kind of felt like the writer was writing about his own struggles. It almost felt like a biography. And not that I'm not. It, it, it could be it, that could be possible. <laughs> you know, I wasn't it wasn't like I was like, oh, this is interesting, I guess, from like if I was reading a book. Um, but from a comic book perspective, um, I, I, I didn't read the second issue. Um, and I'm okay with that, you know. Um, but, you know, I, I've heard a lot. The art's beautiful. It, it's it's a, it's, it's a yeah. nice taste and it, it's really clean. Personally, though, I, I kind of strayed away from this book after the first issue. Yeah, that's totally fine. Uh, I mm -hmm. think Radiant Black for me, it, I think it's an acquired taste. It's a great mm -hmm. taste. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, it, the first issue probably was a little, little soft biographical, but I, I like that kind of down on it's your luck character who mm -hmm. breaks good, which is kind of what happened. And then that from there, his universe just pun intended supernova into this whole uh, yeah. massive verse. And they're introducing all of these uh, new characters. So sure. yeah, folks uh, did lucky is a great pickup. Number one issues coming out on this FOC. I believe this is either cover A or I don't even know which cover this is. There's like five or six covers and there yeah. are some cool ratios. So again, if you can get in your orders early, you might be able to snag some ratios at a decent price. So let's keep moving on. Now we're breaking into the top four and here we go. This next one, just pure cover butter, baby. As all it's right. all about this damn cover. And yeah. woo, man, uh, uh, oh, I love that. Yeah, to do oh, it. oh my God. <laughs> Ah, I love this cover. Yeah, so what we're looking at is Nubia, Queen of the Amazons, and the 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 chocolate Nubian queen <laughs> is looking great on the volleyball court, man. This is a beautiful cover. Yeah, uh, this yes, is sir. cover C. All right, this is cover C. So if you're like me, I love to order gorgeous covers. Um, yeah, I order a lot of art germ covers. Uh, this is who does this cover? I don't even know who does this cover. This is a great cover. Uh, yeah, I order art germ covers, I order rose besh covers. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, this is just a pure cover play. You want to comment on this uh cover real quick before I move on? Yeah, it looks like Chu, I want to say, or um, uh, Derek Cho, Chu. Or, yeah, you're Derek right, Chu. Derek. Okay, Chu. good job. Yeah. yeah, yeah, thank you. No, no, um, yeah, uh, not only is this going to be a pretty 
great series. I think I'll definitely probably, I think I already have this um, picked up. I, I saw this cover a few weeks ago already. So um, when you popped it up, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, of course you're going to put this cover out there. It's, it's a great <laughs> yeah, cover, yeah. man. Um, it is. The nice thing about if you like to grade books like myself and Bad Boy do, um, yeah. DC books are like the easiest books to grade because oh my of god yes high quality paper you know what yes. i mean so um yes. and i mean this is a frame right now you know you, you know you can pick up a few copies get one graded or get get them all graded you know why not um yeah this is no, the card is stock paper. cover so yeah, i mean card stock, uh, can't go wrong. aside from you know wiping your fingerprints off these are usually right. an easy right. 9.8 for sure sure yeah, definitely. Yeah, but God, that's just such a beautiful cover. I will have that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's get into the top three. So the top three for FOC of this week, uh, the week ending July 9th, July 9th being uh, this Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, next at number three, we have another indie. Now, okay. this one made me laugh out loud because this looks great. This is a satire of Sesame Street called Survival Street. Okay. Uh, this is going to be awesome. The solicitation on it is pretty hilarious. It takes a very gritty, uh, just satire of Sesame Street. Obviously, you can tell by the artwork. I believe this one here is cover B. Mm -hmm. Again, a lot of shops don't either. They don't order or they don't order enough of independent, <clears throat> independent books and publishers. So you definitely want to make sure if you want to, if you're interested in books like this, they they already have like medium to low print runs. You just mm -hmm. want to make sure you get your copies. There's two covers sure. that I've seen for it. And this is the cover B for it. The cover A is good. But I like the B with the knockoff of uh, Grover and like Oster Grouch guy looking like a, a apocalypse survivor. So, yeah. yeah, Survival Street has definitely cracked this top 10 list. Perfect. And uh, let's get down to the top two. So, all right. Some might say these are low-hanging fruit. But you know what? Sometimes... When a book comes out, you want to make sure you get a certain cover. I happen to be a huge fan. I was a huge fan of the book that came out this week. The big book for me this week was Batman 125. So the FOC for the next one is going to be Batman 126. You're okay. looking at a uh, cover C of that featuring uh, Bruce just getting manhandled by like failsafe. And this is a 1990s retro type of cover. Uh, Ferd, you got any comments on this cover here? It reminds me of being a kid in 1996, 95, man. I, I love it. That's cool, man. And I don't read DC that often. I've, I've been trying to get into like Blue Beetle and, you know, the the Zack Snyder or Zack Snyder, um, uh, the Snyder run, basically, of Batman. Yeah. Um, I've just been too busy with other books and stuff. But I know this is it. I dig this cover. It's cool. Yeah, it's a cool cover. I'm, I'm the same way. I was an 80s and 90s child, and this reminded me of one of those mm -hmm. throwback uh, Tom McFarlane type cover. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to make yeah. sure, you know, I'm going I'm to get the book, but I want to make sure I get this cover. So, sure. number one, silent drum roll. That's what I'm doing with my fingers. I'm doing a silent drum roll. Number one for the FOC this week is an amazing cover. Harley Quinn, uh, cool. number 18. Yes. Dude, like check that. it out. Listen, uh, Harley Quinn's coming out with a whole set of all these classic Batman covers. Mm -hmm. Uh, I feel like these are going to be a huge, huge seller, mm -hmm. huge seller, uh, just for the, you know, just for the collector in you, you know, I'm not sure. a big Harley Quinn reading fan, but yeah. I am absolutely, I actually already ordered, <laughs> I ordered like three of these already. So yeah, she <laughs> has like, it's either like five or six, including her annual, but they'll, they'll pop up in the next show. Sure. But yeah, yeah. for me. This was like number one by far. Um, you okay. got to get this great. Uh, I mean, just everything about it. Harley Quinn. Then is like all brand new adventures of Harley. The the girl wonder. Like it, it's a total send off. They even put. Uh, they even put like in the top right corner how it's kind of worn. Yeah, like I love that. That's what old, I love about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you found an old copy in your in your dresser, and it's worth like a million dollars. Yeah. Like they really gave it the full treatment. So, cool. yeah, this is a book. This is, again, Harley Quinn number 18. This is cover mm -hmm. C. It's a total uh, Batman homage cover. And, yeah, there you have it, folks. There's your FOC top 10 list uh, for the final order cutoff for this week. Any uh, further comments before we go into the market report? Bird. 
Well, I just want to say, um, I mean, you, you bring good stuff, man. Uh, I, I always feel like I'm educated by you, bro. Um, the, especially the Indies and the DC stuff. I'm, I'm more of a Marvel fan myself and I need to branch out a little bit, but, um, yeah, that was a great list, man. Thanks. Thank you so much. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I guess I'll take over from this point. Um, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. I don't have as many slides as my friend, bad boy here, but, um, just kind of like, so that was your, that was your main course. And I'll guess I'll give the dessert here. So oh, the, the dessert, baby, people love dessert. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's well, uh, I'll say, Hey, you don't have, a, you don't have a lot of slides, but you got some great information for sure. For I, sure. I always try, man. Yeah. Yeah. So my part of the show, I'm going to call it the bird watch. This is for the week of July 8th, 2022. So basically how I'm going to do this, I'll do three picks. Keep it short and sweet again. Um, my first pick is going to be a book on the dip. The next one's going to be kind of a short term, um, kind of dollar bin kind of looking book that, you know, not trying to invest too much money into, but who knows you could sell it, find a dollar bin, sell it for 10 to 15. That's a thousand percent return. And then my last will be more of a, you know, kind of like, uh, your, your, your normal Apple stock kind of, kind of comic book to invest in blue chips. Uh, I like that. <laughs> yeah. It's going to, it's just going to pay. It's not going to go up too crazy unless something, you know, crazy occurs, but it's, it's more of a kind of hold on to it, put your money into something like that'll consistently go up in my opinion. All three of these books are modern books. They're not nothing bronze, silver, or, um, you know, gold, um, more so books that, you know, the, the normal person can acquire. So I'm going to start nice. with slide one here. That's me. I'm I'm normal person. <laughs> I'm I'm normal, but I'm abnormal. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my first book here is Fenge's number one. Obviously, uh, this has been a a pretty big big book lately. Yes. Uh, the significance of this book particularly is the first appearance of America Chavez. Um, I don't think I need to say too much, but I will anyway. She is the star, I would say, uh, the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness show. I thought she killed the role. Uh, the like American Chavez girl was awesome. You didn't have to, like, do any background kind of uh, checks on her. She just played it well, man. Miss um, Gomez, she just she just killed it. Uh, yeah. But kind of back to, like, the actual, like, dollars and cents here. So 2021, I, I'm basing a lot of my reports off 2021 because, you know, along with a lot of different assets, like, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, um, yeah. NFTs, all that, all that stuff. I'll just say stuff. Um, yeah. Was pretty expensive last year. It, it was it was very high in price. So kind of using that as a gauge of like kind of the top of the market, if you will. Uh, last year, Vengeance, the regular cover, the the one on your right there with Magneto on the cover. I saw it in anywhere from 300 in like okay grade to I thought a thousand raw in comic book shops. Um Ooh. The Diodato variant is a one in 15. Now the Vengeance one, I want to say the print runs around 25 K. So if you do the math, it's the one in 15. No one was buying, not a lot of shops were getting 15 copies of this Vengeance number one. So obviously it was, you know, a pretty, pretty short print run. I saw five, nine eights last year, go for five K. I even saw one go for like seven. And this God is like dang. six months prior. There was no, this is before any previews, anything I said. Everybody just knew that um, America Chavez was going to be in the multiverse of madness. But yeah, dropping five five large on a 9.8 deal down variant was pretty crazy. Recently now, um, uh, let's see here. Recently, current prices have kind of softened out to 175 to, to around 300. Um and I've seen the 9.8 Diodano variant go for 2K. That's kind of, I want to say that was about a month ago or so. So obviously this is dipped in price. I don't know if it's a kind of the this magnitude of, you know, once the character shows up, everyone just dumps their, their books. Or I don't know if it's just people need to put more gas in their tank because it's seven bucks a gallon in California. Uh, I don't really know. But um, the, the, yeah, the, uh, it, here it's in Seattle, it's around six and a quarter. So yeah. Um, but I don't. Uh, but regardless, if you believe in America Chavez, you know, get this book on 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 the dip, and you know, hold it for a long time. She's here to stay, man. Um, oh yeah. Whether you like her or not, um, which I thought she was pretty good. Um, yeah, she's here to stay. 
All right, moving on to my hey, next as side. A side note, I, as a side note, I was at yeah. Disneyland recently, and uh, there's a Doctor Strange show. And who mm-hmm. who would you know? Uh, I mean, I guess it's kind of a spoiler alert for anyone yeah. who hasn't seen it. But, yeah, America Chavez is heavily featured at Disneyland. And the Very kids cool, loved her. Yeah, The actor, the, the actress they had playing her, spot on. So, mm-hmm. yeah, like you said, she's definitely here to stay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. I, I'm, I mean, I think, um, you know, obviously Marvel's trying to get into that, um, you know, POC kind of category and, you know, we, we had some echo echo last year and, you know, um, Falcon winter soldier, that type of stuff. But I, I, I thought regardless of her being of, you know, uh, a POC member, a person um, of color type of character, a person of color she, character. She was a great actress. I mean, yeah, she just, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. fun. Um, you know, she had she had a great look for for the character as well, and it was just a fun character. Um, yeah. Uh, moving along, so this is my second kind of like you know, don't pay a ton of money for this book. Uh, just kind of look for it in you know dollar bins or you know your back issue bins for cover. It's Blade Number One from the 2006 series uh, or the 2006 year or whatever. Um, I believe this is the third or fourth series. I can't remember, but um, a lot of people are looking at the Blade One from like the mid 90s. And those are great books. I mean, the art's kind of funky. There's a Bart Sears number one and all that good stuff. But the print runs are like insane on those books. I looked at the print run on this guy. It's around 45,000, which is, you know, it's it's pretty close to what um, the mid 2000 books were going at anyway. Uh, last year, this book was selling on the announcements and just kind of the the idea of Blade coming to the MCU um, around 10 to 15 in high grade. I didn't find any 9-8 sales. So that's kind of interesting i don't don't think a lot of people have been subbing this book in for for grading uh this past year it's still you know it's it's dropped in value by about 50 percent um again you know don't you know try and find these darvins don't don't pay uh you know exert prices for these i did find one nine eight sale for 40 bucks so basically purchase grade and like wait right um you know if, if if for 40 bucks that's 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 a really safe investment if you will um, I've submitted about five of these books and I've gotten one nine, eight and the rest nine, fours, nine, twos, and nine, sixes there. It's a really tough book to get in high grade because of the white cover and the white gloss cover, and all that yeah. good stuff. Um, and, uh, if you see on the, the left kind of where blades blades, um, like coats kind of hanging there, it, it's susceptible to color breaks and, um, and spine ticks. So because of, because really, of that black, that black, because on of that edge, black huh? yeah. Yeah, wow. Uh, Tough grade, man. Tough grade. Yeah. Um, it, it's a fun book. Um, have you seen this book in the wild before, like in dollar bins or I've never been book? looking for it. As a matter of fact, a lot of times your posts are sometimes they're they're the first time I've seen a book. That's I mean, oh, okay. You, you stay on point. So yeah, yeah I, I get try, a lot of my education through your a lot of my education comes through your Instagram posts. Cool. <laughs> Good to know, man. Good to know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, kind of low hanging fruit. Who knows? It's it's just kind of one of those like another books to look for. And last but not least, one of my favorite books, like I want to say of all time. Oh, yeah, um, it is. Century number one, uh, Paul Jenkins, Jay Lee. Uh, this is one of my favorite books, like I said. Um, last year, Roz went up a little bit on speculation. I actually, um, I did the ranges of nine eights to, to 550. I actually did see one go for like 680. But that's generally where I saw this in the 500 to 550 oh, that's, range. That's, that's such a tough grade. It, it's a, a nine eights are impossible in this book uh, just because, I mean, this book came out in 2000. So it's a 20 year old book and it's, you know, sitting in long boxes or whatever, or maybe it's on a wall, but um, obviously you can look at it. It's, it's all black around the whole entire book. Um, this past year though, oddly enough, Roz have been kind of going for the same amount, 50 to 200 bucks. And the nine eights wow. dropped uh, down a little bit. I want to say, though, it's because people just don't want to sell this book. Um, Obviously, you know, MCU and COVID has really propped up, you know, prices. It's inflated prices in the comic book um, community and all that stuff. But I I generally think that regardless if this character makes it in the MCU, uh, like just if he doesn't make it at all, period, because he's kind of a tough character to make it into it. He's Um, he's very OP. Yeah. Yeah. He's just a really interesting kind of character. And I know, um, you know, the void uh, was the first appearance of the voids in this as well. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, 
have you read have you read this book before like either dude and, i i've had so many copies of this book um yeah <laughs> I remember when this came out on the on the uh, Marvel Knights imprint, and I, I probably had like three or four copies of this century because yeah. it was funny. The century uh, kind of coincided with the Planet Hawk, which is one of my favorite all time right, storylines. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know those two went at it. So yeah, I I had this. I yeah. bought and sold it so many times, and now that it's in fuego, I have none. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you know what? Uh, also, um, there is an SCC. SDCC and a one in 50 variant out there. I prefer the SDCC, SDCC variant. Um, it's interior art that's on the cover. Basically, he looks like Superman, but um, it, it's just an interesting cover. And one more thing to add on to Century just kind of as a whole. I picked this book because, you know, again, you know, it's possibility it goes in the MCU and all that good stuff. But, you know, usually with series like that a character has, like, uh, century series one through five and then they'll have a mini series like in 2010 or another one in 2000 i think it was like 16 every single series written by every writer that's done this book is as say consistently good so even if you're not in the market to spend so much money on this download it man like download the book read it it's a fun read he doesn't make a ton of appearances like in the MC or the Marvel universe as a whole, he kind of pops in and out and stuff and he yeah. chooses sides like one way or the other. Um, but just a fun read. And I, I personally, I think it's a top 100 modern grail in my opinion, just, just for the story itself. What do you think, man? Yeah. And because um, if I remember correctly, he's a, he's a retconned character, right? Like Jessica Jones, right? Yeah, I believe he's one so. Of those, yeah. yeah, he's one of those characters that they they retconned him and stuck him in the uh, extended universe or the MCU right. or you know the comic book universe. Yeah, uh, it was one of those things where like the world forgot he existed and then he came yeah. and made a comeback. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I could see them doing something with this uh, character, just to you know introduce a character that's just that's just so powerful, but he has that. Right kind of mental issue side where he has to you know deal with the void and all of that so i i could see, see how they would introduce him into the mcu for sure yeah it's, oh, it's a fun book yeah yeah man. We'll see. hey that's a great book to have on the radar so uh yeah that's it folks uh any last second uh comments you want to make before we wrap it up um no man i had a lot of fun just uh you know it's always nice to go to um uh you know kind of my, my kind of background of uh, expertise, quote unquote, on books is kind of the past stuff, you know, and I and like I keep a pretty good eye on characters that I follow and just kind of what's the rumblings and stuff. So it's nice to have a resource to go to and learn about, you know, just upcoming things that are new and kind of keep the keep your interest in in comics and all that good stuff. Um, so I appreciate all the knowledge that you share um, and 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 also. What's nice about your FOC report is it it also encourages people to go into the stores and, you know, talk with your LCS and have a relationship with them. Because one more tidbit about FOC that's really good is if you have a good rapport with your comic book store, they're going to treat you good. And you don't got to oh, spend yeah, you're not you're not going to spend 50 to 100 bucks a month on books. Just like if you talk with them, because, dude, most of the time comic book store owners are, are nerds and fans just like us. And so they want to make their customers happy. So yeah, I always right. encourage people go out there, talk to your comic book store owners. They'll, they hook you up, man. They want, they want to service their, their customers that show, you know, uh, loyalty. Loyalty. But if, yes. but if you don't have like the access to do that, you go online and do the same exact thing that bad boy is suggesting. Um, and um, yeah, that's all I got to say. Great first show, man. I had a good time. Oh, man. Great show. Fun hanging out with you. I love the way we chopped this up. Uh, that's it, folks. We will see you again this time in the next FOC. So, again, follow each of us on Instagram. All of this information, we keep this stuff rolling every day, nonstop, every week. Until next time, y'all take it easy. Cool.